Hey guys, Jimmy here. Now, I got a lot of all these questions asked about microphones. So in this video, I'm basically gonna answer all of these questions and at the same time, I'm gonna do a product review of the Fine Fine K658 USB Dynamic Mic, which is the one that you're looking at right in front here. Well, Fine Fine, the company of the product itself, just sent their product to me, asking me to test it out and give my honest opinion. So yes, this product review is not a sponsored video. As maybe some of you might have already seen the unboxing video I made a few months back, the so-called you know budget USB condenser mic from Soundtech 2.1. Well, this time around, I'm gonna run you through the differences between a USB condenser mic versus a USB dynamic mic. I hope at the end of this video, you'd understand the differences better and which one suits you best for your daily usage. First of all, I'll just quickly do an unboxing video of the Fine Fine K658 and run you through the build quality, the sound test, and the specification. And after that, I'll do a quick comparison between the two USB mics. And finally, I will try and answer all of the questions from the beginning of the video. I've also provided video chapters for you ease to choose and watch whichever section interests you the most. Now, since the beginning of the video, I kept saying fine fine, while as you can see, the logo is actually spelled as fee fine. Well, according to the company, the correct pronunciations for the brand is actually meant to be fine fine instead of fee fine. It's almost like how you should pronounce Porsche instead of posh. So yeah, keep that in mind. When I received the package, judging from the box design, I have to say, it comes to me as if this microphone is targeted mainly for gamers. I think it's also because of the RGB colors that usually displayed in the gamer setup. Anyways, Fine Fine K658 was first launched at around 120 US dollar, but I think you can get them around 90 US dollar by now. Inside the box, you'll get a shock mount, which is a plus point and a metal ring to secure the microphone to the shock mount itself. You'll also get a 2.5 meter long USB-A to USB-C cables, a 5.8 to 3.8 inch microphone stand adapter, a DAS tripod stand made of steel and of course the microphone itself, which comes with a detachable foam windscreen. The default tripod stands that comes together with the microphone is in high quality. It's pretty solid and sturdy, unlike the Soundtech 2.1 tripod stand that was too flimsy and of low build quality and comes to me as completely useless. But nevertheless, for my daily usage, I prefer to have my microphone attached to a boom arm to save space in my desk and that way I can tuck them aside neatly when I'm not using them. This Fine Fine K658 is actually a perfect match to my recently bought 360 degrees rotatable boom arm from Tron Max. It has a great build quality and best of all, it has a built-in cable management, which I will probably do a separate video review of the Tron Max boom arm. The Fine Fine K658 comes with a pretty huge shock mount, a perfect fit for the size of the K658 microphone itself. However, I think the shock mount can be made better for the hefty and sturdy microphone body that is made of metal. Because right now, to my opinion, the shock mount feels a little plasticky. And all in all, when it comes to the physical design of the Fine Fine K658, it actually reminds me of the Shure SM7B XLR microphone, but with a fraction of its price. Now, let's talk about some of the features on the microphone. One thing that stood out with the K658 is the RGB light. Honestly, I'm not really a big fan of RGB light, but I have to say this thing is actually pretty neat and subtle. 
is not really in your face coming out from a microphone itself. Instead, it is actually shining from the bottom of the microphone and it reflects from the shock mount itself. I don't know if it's just me, but the combination of the mic and the shock mount along with the RGB light, it reminds me of a spaceship. Aside from the RGB light, the mic itself is pretty straightforward and minimalistic. There are only two buttons on the mic, both of them are non-tactile or touch sensitive. One of which is integrated into a huge front dial. As clearly seen, this is the mute button. There is a light indicator around the button itself that will turn red when it's muted and green when it's unmuted. At the back of the mic, there is another small touch button to turn on and off the RGB ambient light. Too bad they don't give their users the freedom to control the RGB light. I think it would be great if I can be given options to choose if I want a single color that match with my overall setup and mood instead of having it fixed in a looping rainbow RGB. The huge dial that I mentioned earlier is meant to control the gains. The best part of the dial knob is that it's not an infinite knob, meaning there is a hard stop to the knob. So you can actually tell for sure when it's on its lowest or highest gains. At the bottom of the mic, there's a USB-C port to connect your mic to the computer, as well as a dedicated headphone jack that allows zero latency monitoring. Now, I'm going to do a gain test. I'm facing directly to the microphone with a slight distance about 4 inches away from the mic and I'll start off with the lowest gain. As I move up, roughly about 10% gain and 20% gain and now up to 50% gain and all the way up to 80% gain and now we're at the maximum of 100% gain. Moving on, let's do a distance test to the microphone. Now, for your information, dynamic microphone usually works best at a close distance. Usually, you want to position yourself between 2 inches away, which would sound like this, or maximum at 6 inches away from the microphone, which would sound like this, but once you get further, about 1 foot or 30 cm away from the microphone, you probably sound like this. Not forgetting to mention, this particular microphone is a unidirectional cardioid microphone, meaning it's specifically designed to have someone talking to the mic from the front, and this means that it rejects audio from the left, and the right, and the back of the microphone. It doesn't even make sense, but I think about you. Well, this is very useful if you are recording in a room that has no soundproof or whatsoever, just like my home office studio here. So it doesn't really need to have any built-in noise cancellation features to the mic itself. Now, a quick comparison between the FineFine K658 Dynamic Mic versus the Soundtech 2.1 USB condenser mic that I had previously had. The Dynamic Mics comes with a simple construction, meaning they are extremely rugged mic and they can handle extremely loud sound signal well. At the same time, they also do a pretty good job in rejecting background noises as well. Now, dynamic mics tends to have a very distinct broadcast sound to them, which usually sound pretty deep with more bass, as how you would usually hear in the radio or podcast. Condenser mics, on the other hand, are usually more complex, more fragile, but they picked up delicate sound with wider frequency response. So you get more natural sound and they have a higher output level. There is also a big gap in terms of price points. The Soundtech 2.1 USB condenser mic costs at about 500,000 rupiah in Indonesia, which is around about 35 US dollar, while the Fine Fine K658 here costs at about 1.4 million rupiah in Indonesia, which is around about 90 to 100 US dollar. The Soundtech 2.1 condenser mic have more features compared to the Fine Fine K658 here, but more features sometimes also means more problems. 
Just like what I've mentioned in my previous review video for this particular Soundtech 2.1, I love how they managed to pack so many different features into this tiny microphone. You got the noise cancellation features, you got echo features, mute features, and you can even change it to either cardioid or omnidirectional mode. But with so many features packed into the mic, naturally, that tends to be more flaws. One of the examples are the noise cancellation features. Let me just turn it on. Which, I noticed that it tends to cancel out the first few words in the beginning of a sentence after a long pause. Not to mention the hassle of having to keep turning off the echo features during the initial connections to the computer and sometimes during a recording process, you'll also pick up some static noise in it. But the good thing is, Soundtech have managed to fix most of all these problems by updating their firmwares, which I have also uploaded a tutorial video for those of you who are finding these same problems, so check it out. On the other hand, the Fine Fine K658 tends to be a more simplistic microphone. You have all the basic needs in the microphone such as the mute and gain control with an additional RGB on-off touch sensitive button. And since it's a dynamic mic, it tends to cancel out the background noise really well naturally. In fact, for VO recording purpose, I prefer using this particular dynamic mic way better than a condenser mic as it makes my voice sounds deeper and clearer and gives my voice more sense of authority and hopefully, holds more attention as you listen throughout the video. Another difference is that really matters to me between the Fine Fine K658 and the Soundtech 2.1 is the gain knob. Instead of having that tiny little gain knob like the Soundtech 2.1 here, the Fine Fine K658 has a nice, huge and sturdy gain control, which is way easier for me to hold on to and adjust the gain while using them. So should you invest in a microphone? For those of you who have just tuned into my channel and watching my videos, I use microphone mostly to record voiceovers either for my YouTube videos or a voiceover mockup for commercial purpose as I work in advertising industry creating commercials. I don't do podcasts, at least not now. So one of the questions which I also get a lot is do I actually need a microphone? Honestly, after experiencing it myself, talking over a microphone makes a huge difference. You'll straight away sound 10 times clearer and more professional compared to using an internal laptop microphone or such. Even if you're not doing a voiceover or a vocal recording like singing, a microphone can actually help you sound more professional in clients' presentations or even meetings, especially in remote working condition. This way, you'll be able to draw more attention to your presentations as you speak to the audience. But again, it all goes back to your personal preference. So, which microphone is a better choice for you? Well, if you are using it for daily purpose just for meetings and such, I would recommend Soundtech 2.1 budget USB condenser mic or other brands alike. At the price point, you'll be covered with you know, features you will need to get started. But if you are doing podcasts, recording or live streaming purpose, I'd say it's worthwhile to actually invest more and go with a dynamic microphone such as the Fine Fine K658 that I have here, which will give a little more clarity to your voice and cancel out the background noise very well. So that's it. I hope you guys find this video helpful, especially for those of you who are looking to purchase the right microphone for your daily usage. More importantly, I hope you guys had fun throughout the days and liked this video. A big thank you to Fine Fine for sending me this microphone and allowing me to give my honest review. And of course, a huge thanks to all my subscribers in the JDrive channel. And do let me know your feedbacks, let me know your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to hear them as it really helps me to grow these channels. Also, do follow me on Instagram to get more updates. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again on the next episode.